I want to talk about some isms in our profession. When I say isms, I'm referring to the various theories and models that inform us about learning. Have you actually taken the time to consider what learning really is? According to Webster's Dictionary, learning is a knowledge or skill acquired by instruction or study. According to Shakespeare, learning is but an adjunct of ourselves. Learning theories are conceptual frameworks describing how information is absorbed, processed, and retained during learning. Here's a chart of learning theories organized by scientific discipline. You may recognize some of them. Nearly all of you have surely heard of behaviorism. I recall learning about Pavlov's work on classical conditioning and Skinner's work on operant conditioning back in high school. Behaviorism is still applied extensively. In fact, every time I hear a bell ring in school, I feel the urge to go to class. I may be in trouble if there is ever a fire because some genius decided to change the fire alarm from a distinct shriek to a less frightening set of bells. Most of the first learning theories were not impacted by today's technology. These days, we are trying to figure out how the internet and social media plays a part in learning. Connectivism establishes a link between the social and cultural learning and the technology of our digital age. The key to applying the knowledge gained from learning theories is to understand that these theories overlap. For instance, social learning theory proposes that people learn through contact with others. Social learning the theory contains many of the components of behaviorism through vicarious reinforcement, rewards, and punishment. Cognitive theory of multimedia learning, researched by Meyer, and cognitive load theory established by Sweller have lots to do with our capacity to learn from various forms of stimuli. Both of these theories contain components of the original stages of cognitive, cognitive development theory stemming from Piaget's work. These theories have to do with the nature of knowledge itself, how our minds gradually acquire, construct, and use knowledge. If I were to pick a learning theory that tends to apply to me, I would likely say constructivism. The idea that one builds on knowledge already acquired and attempts to relate new information with knowledge already established. Constructivism relates to problem-based, situational, and discovery learning. Humanism is another learning theory that many of us are probably familiar with. I assume most of you have heard of Maslow's hierarchy of need. To be effective, we need to understand our th students' motivations to learn. Humanists seek to engage the whole learner by tapping into a learner's intellect, emotions, skills, and social capacities. Beyond teaching subject matters, we are in the business of enriching lives. Some of you have probably heard of Erickson's stages of development or Gardner's multiple intelligence theory. Gardner felt that each individual possesses a unique blend of learning modalities and that providing multiple ways of learning to process information would empower them to choose the best way to learn. As an inspiring instructional designer, I appreciate the resemblance of Maslow's hierarchy pyramid with Bloom's learning taxonomy, of which most of us are familiar with. It is important to understand that research about how we learn is exceptionally young compared to research done in many other fields. Nearly all of this research has been done in the last 100 years. We don't know of all the answers to learning, but it feels like we are in a race to figure out why. That leads me to the reason for this presentation. The most distinct difference between andragogy, the study of adult learning, and general pedagogy is that adults tend to ask why. Adults question not only the meaning of what they are learning, but also the relevancy of what they are learning. As a student, and even now, I have been trying to make sense of all these theories. 
When I say make sense, I don't mean understanding them and their meaning, but understand how I apply this information to practice of teaching. Benjamin Bloom has given us all a model in which to work from, at least for now. As educators, we have a responsibility to educate and enrich the lives of our students, and to answer the question of why. Better yet, we should be helping our students answer that question for themselves. Research has revealed that adults prefer self-directed learning over that led by a professional instructor. Unlike children, adults prefer to control their own learning pace and select more than one medium for their learning. In the 1940s, Edgar Dale surmised we remember things based on observing different kinds of media. William Glasser built upon Dale's work by establishing more finite percentages. According to Glasser, we tend to learn 10% of what we read, 20% of what we hear, 30% of what we see. We tend to remember 50% of what we see and hear. When it comes to higher order learning or active learning, we tend to remember 70% of what we discuss. 80% of what we remember is from what we experience and 95% of retention comes from what we teach others. Working from this theory, a professor that simply uses notes, images, tables, and graphs during his or her lecture would be about 50% effective. People have been teaching this way for centuries. We are just now figuring out that the way I am presenting to you right now is fairly ineffective as a standalone teaching method. I know most of you are exceptional teachers because you have figured out how to make what you're teaching relevant to your students. I'm asking you to help me make this presentation more effective by learning about some of these theories on your own and then discussing what you've learned with others. I challenge you to try out the application of at least one of these theories in your classrooms. My ultimate challenge to you is to share that application with one of your colleagues. After all, UCC itself is a learning community.